Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to another Sabbath day. I'd like to give a personal shout out to my Facebook family and also to my YouTube subscribers. Greetings. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas, Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands, those of the sub-Saharan and transatlantic slave trade. Greetings. Before I get started, I'd like to give a sponsor sponsorship for my my uh, YouTube page, my uh, Facebook page, and also to my uh, the sons of Jacob.com. If you want to support my efforts, feel free to go on to uh, Amazon.com and purchase one of seven of my books that I have online so far. Uh, this book here, Hebrew Instruction Manual. You just do a put a search in, in for this name, and you will bring my uh, page up on Amazon where you can. See all of my books, and you would be able to purchase one of seven in ebook format or paperback. That was the uh, Hebrew instruction manual, Prophets of Israel. Hebrew Doctrine of Christ. King David, and I have two books of poetry, Poetic Thoughts of a Young Lion in the Asphalt Jungle, and Spiritual Growth of a Young Lion. All of these books are available on Amazon.com. Feel free to purchase one, if not all of them. And I also have a uh, ebook, a book called Understanding Genesis: The Beginning. Uh, it's only an ebook format. Feel free to go onto Amazon.com and and purchase one, if not seven, all seven. Your purchases will be appreciated. Thank you very much. Okay. My topic today is how must the Israelites reset? Again, how must the Israelites reset? Israel, my last lesson is called The Israelites Are Still in Gross Darkness. I mentioned that the Israelites are still in trouble with the Most High God, and we need to reset. You may ask, what do you mean? The Most High, through the prophets and righteous men, showed us what he wants. The Most High makes it clear in his laws. Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. There are things that the Most High have written in this Bible to teach us, his saints, instructing them what should be done. So we're going to go through the phases of how, how we reset. Phase one, we must make an earnest, a humble plea. That, that is supplication. We must make supplication. Let's, we're gonna, I'm going to start with Nehemiah. We're going we're gonna to look at what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah 1 and 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Achaliah, and it came to pass in the month, Chislio, in the twelfth, in the twentieth year, as I was in Shushan, the palace. Nehemiah was a Jew, a cupbearer for 
King Ataxes. Ataxes. Now he was, you know, he, he was in comfort. He was he had a job, an important job, working for the king. A cupbearer in the presence of the king every day. So he didn't, you know, you, you put it in perspective as today. Nehemiah was like, mm, let's see. Oh, well, one of these Negroes that ain't got, you know, that don't, that don't made it. He don't, you know, he, he, he got his three, four hundred million dollars and, you know, he chilling with the king. You know, having conversation with the king, had the king working for the king to the point where he could ask things and, and get, get those things granted. Nehemiah 1 and 2, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked him concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. Nehemiah received word from one of his brothers and a few other Jews who came to visit. Nehemiah knew that the Jews were in captivity, but he was checking on them, those that escaped and those in captivity. And like today, when our brothers and sisters get out of the hood, they do not care to know what's going on with the people. Only a few sh show concern. But the majority of them are responsible for making our communities dangerous and poor. Let me tell you how. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 15 and 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Those people... Uh, of those that get out of the hood with all this evil communication. You know, talking about all this crazy stuff. The rappers and hip-hop artists are singing about drugs, sex, and killing to our children because their parents have been in gross darkness. These children have no positive role models, especially no positive guidance from their parents. They are sponges to all the evil things that they see, and it becomes normal and justified. All in the path of getting money. That's all it is. And and, and these and these young people are just that you know it's oh it's all good as long as it's about getting money. You know, you can't you can't you can't be coming on another man's hustle. Yeah, I can. According to the most high God, it's evil. And when you're doing evil things to your people, evil going to come upon you. Nehemiah 1 and 3. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the provinces are in great affliction and reproach. The walls of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. The, stat, the status of the Jews at that time was not good. They were soundly destroyed. The Jews were being afflicted in the cities, and nobody wanted them around. Jerusalem was the walled city, and the gates was destroyed. So, Nehemiah was getting his daily news about his people. You know, he getting his daily news about his people. Hey, what's going on in the hood, man? You know, he's working for the king, so it ain't, it's not like he can go step out and go into the hood. You know? And he had people coming and reporting him, telling him, hey, man, it's, it's bad, man. People afflicted everywhere. Nehemiah 1 and 4. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Nehemiah was living in the palace with the king, like many of our people who become successful in today's society, not realizing that our people are in captivity. However, Nehemiah knew we had a homeland that was destroyed, and he mourned for his people because he loved his people as he loved himself. Nehemiah remembered the most, high, most important commandments. Mark 12 and 30. I'm going to go over this again because the fact is, we got to understand 
what the most important commandments are. Nehemiah remembered that. Why do you think he's sitting there mourning when he's hearing bad news about what's happening to his people and fasting? You know, when somebody, when, when that triggers a fast and you weeping and, and, and fasting and praying, you, you, you have grave concern for your people. Now, you know, you Negroes don't do that. Oh, well, it's all good. You know, got mine out. Got to get yours. Mark 12 and 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. I will continue to show how Nehemiah loved the Most High God with all of his mind, body, and soul. Mark 12, 31. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. When Nehemiah was told about the condition of his people, he was incredibly sad. He did not care only for himself like many of us do today. Nehemiah prayed, fasted, and wept for his people. Many of you do not lift a hand to help your closest of relatives. That's, that's, a, that's a status of us not loving each other as, as the Most High God in Christ commanded us to do. Nehemiah 1 and 5, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keep it covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. What is Nehemiah doing right here? He is addressing the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of his fathers who keeps, co he, who keeps covenant with us who love him and observe and do his commandments. Nehemiah is confessing the sins of the nation of Israel. Nehemiah 1 and 6. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servant, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. You know, he's confessing to the Most High God for everybody, including himself, you know, Father, I sin too. You know, we're guilty of it. But here's the thing. Now, everybody doesn't have that, that ability to go before the Most High and give prayer. Because Most High is not listening to a defiled sinner. You, you, you full of pork and you full of shrimp, crab, and lobster, and you... You got all types of parasites and worms inside of your body doing the things that most I got tell you not to do and you are unclean to him and you are sitting there trying to pray to him and he can't hear you. He don't listen to, to sinners. He told you not to eat that stuff, but you eat it anyway. You know, you're walking around with, with clothes that are not, you know, a, a woman should not be in pants. He's telling you, you know, a man walking around in a, in a skirt and stuff, you can't pray to the Most High. He is not, you, you're disgusting to him. When he said all that do so are an abomination, he means that you are disgusting. You, he can't even look at you. It's like looking at a turd on the damn ground. Nobody want to look at that. So, Nehemiah went to the Most High. He fasted, he prayed, he wept. He went to the Most High God, understanding the law, doing the law, praying to the Most High God. Now right, we're going to get to phase two of resetting, repenting. Nehemiah was following the, the template of what King Solomon had written. One would think that supplication and repenting are the same, but they are not. Supplication is understanding your sins against the Most High. Telling him your wrongs and the wrongs of your forefathers and pleading for forgiveness. Repentance is after you make supplication, returning to the law and keeping the commandments. 1 Kings 8 and 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sin it not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carried them away captives unto the land of the enemy, 
far or near. Now, this is what the Most High had done at this time. He had he had taken the Jews. The Babylonians had not, uh, had had destroyed them, destroyed the city, destroyed the people, put them in captivity and slavery. Now the Persian Medes had come along, and they they also were carried away captive into their land and was doing building their cities and stuff up. Nehemiah was checking on his brothers, the Jews, who were led away captive of being pursued and afflicted. And they are, are a reproach. We were captives not in our land, and Nehemiah mourned for his people. Thus he knew we sinned against the Most High and are now delivered to the enemy. Unlike today, many of you do not know that we are still delivered to our enemies because we sinned against the Most High. Y'all don't know this. Y'all, you know, because you ask a lot of you Hebrews today, and y'all think that y'all are too blessed to be stressed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. And I hear this, and I'm sitting up here saying to myself, what land do we have control of? What government do we control? What sovereignty do we have where people paying us taxes and we have a police station that Hebrews come out concerning, uh, caring about their people? But when the Hebrews come, come out with the white man, they just as worse as the white man now because they hate you more than the white man do. Most of them do work for, that work for the police force. I don't have no love for you. First King 847. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives and repent and make supplications unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. This is exactly what Nehemiah was doing. He was fasting, praying, and confessing the sins of our people. This is phase two of resetting. We must confess our sins. Be humble. For the most high, weigh your actions. 1 Samuel 2 and 3. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. A proud man or woman is arrogant and cannot be forgiven. Because the Most High do not want you to come before him with an arrogant tone when you have transgressed against him. You are being haughty, thinking the Most High is supposed to forgive you regardless of how you ask. No. He don't, like I'm saying, he's telling you right here, don't talk so uh, proud. Don't let arrogancy come out of your mouth. You know. Nehemiah 1 and 7. We have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Nehemiah confessed that we, the Jews, did not follow the law, statutes, and commandments that were written in the law of Moses. I, I want to put emphasis upon that because a lot of you Hebrews got way too much leaven in your doctrine. When you are trying to bring laws that are not found in the laws of Moses, you're just creating fornication of, 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 of doctrines, you know, looking everywhere, and you can't find it in the law of Moses. Christ did change some of the laws concerning him, concerning his priesthood, but it did not change any of the laws of Moses. Because adultery is still adultery. He just had made it a little tougher. You look upon a woman with, with adultery in your heart, you know, with uh, lust in your heart, you commit, uh, you've you committed adultery already with her. But the fact is, adultery was in the law of Moses. He just, re he defined it to the point where that you just can't be looking at somebody, ooh, I'll show sure like to have her. That's adultery.
Listen to what the Most High God said about Moses and how he communicated with him. Let me, let me get a, the, the laws are found in the Torah, except those concerning the change of the priesthood. Listen to what the Most High God said about Moses and how he communicated with him. Numbers 12 and 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. The truth is that the nation of Israel did not choose Moses. Not even his brother Aaron nor his sister Miriam. They were attempting to dismiss Moses because he married an Ethiopian woman. After he fled Egypt, Aaron and Miriam were using that to dismiss Moses. This was their excuse. This is all it was, an excuse to dismiss Moses, get rid of him, you know, find fault. And we're going to see how the Most High God saw Moses. Numbers 12 and 2. And they said, had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Had he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it? The Lord heard that. Mary and Aaron did not choose Moses, neither did Israel. Moses had problems with Israel. Listen to how his brother and sister were attempting to dismantle him. The Lord speaks to us too, not just to Moses. They were basically saying, we do not need him. The Most High speaks to us too. The Most High heard their conversation. No, we don't need Moses because the, because the Most High God speaks to us too. We, we, what we need him for? And, and the Most High heard them, heard them talking. Oh, 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 you don't got a little arrogant and stuff, huh? Okay. Numbers 12 and 3. Now the, the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Meek, let's get the understanding. Quiet, gentle, and easily imposed on. Submissive. No, Moses wasn't going to do nothing about it. If they decided to say, you know, we don't need you, Moses. Go on, go on about your business. He ain't going to sit there and argue and fuss about it. All right. Okay, cool. Then I, I'm, I'm on my way then, y'all. You know, y'all take take care. Have a good day. I'm out. Moses was quiet. The most, the most easygoing Hebrew upon the face of the earth. The most high knew Moses was... Not going to say anything, so the Most High is going to take action on Moses' behalf. Because you know Moses wasn't going to say nothing. Okay, we don't need you, Moses. All right, I'm, I'm out of here then. Numbers 12 and 4. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam. Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. The Most High heard Miriam and, Miriam and Aaron. Speaking unto Moses. Well, that Miss Bill Miriam. Mm. Well, I'm going to use this pen. He heard Miriam and Aaron. See, Aaron, I'm going to tell you. Aaron was a troublemaker to me. Because he is speaking against Moses here. And when Moses went into the mouth for 40 days and 40 nights, he made that golden golden uh, calf, the golden calf, with them, told them to take all the gold out of it, and, and, and they made a, a cast and made a, a golden calf. He was doing all of this stuff. He was a troublemaker. That's what I think. Lord, forgive me if I'm wrong. That's that's just an opinion of mine because you know what? When when Aaron when Moses came down asking, "What the heck you doing, Aaron?" Uh, they forced me to make this calf, and, and he blamed it all on. He threw everybody under the bus except him. But he was the expert in, in, in making 
that image. The Most High heard Miriam and Aaron speaking about Moses, and he wanted to speak with the three of them. I would get to where the law is found. Numbers 12 and 5. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came down. And they both came forth. He called only Aaron and Miriam. You know, he called all three to the tabernacle of the congregation, but he only called those two when they got there. Aaron, you and Miriam come here. You know, like that. I would have been scared as hell. I would probably been tripping. I have been like the tin man on the Wizard of Oz. I would have been chankling and clinkling and all kinds of stuff. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. The Most High was able to communicate with Israel using the holy things, such as the tabernacle, ephod, ark of the covenant. Numbers 12 and 6, and he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in visions and will speak unto him in a dream. Now, this is the, this is the communication process of the prophets. The Most High explained how he normally communicate with his prophets. In visions and in dreams. He don't just be up there talking, hey, what's up, Moses? How you doing, man? You know, he don't talk to the prophets like that. Numbers 12 and 7. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. The Most High did not speak to Moses in visions and dreams. Numbers 12 and 8, with him will I speak mouth to mouth. He talked to him face to face, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord's shall be, shall he behold. Wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? You're not afraid to speak against Moses? My servant, most like God chose Moses. He is possessive of Moses, my servant. Y'all mean tell me you, you're not afraid to speak against my servant? Oh. The Most High spoke to Moses face to face. Furthermore, the Most High did not speak to Moses regarding his laws and similitudes. He spoke clearly to Moses where he could easily understand what the Most High was saying to him. 1 Corinthians 14.33 For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. You're supposed to be clearly understanding the law, because the law is not confusing. You know, if you love the Most High God, you keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous, they are not hard, they are not difficult. This informed me that the Most High did not create confusion in his law also. He spoke plainly to Moses face to face. If Moses was confused about a law, I'm certain he asked questions. What I am saying is that the law is centralized in the Torah. The only exceptions are the changes in the law concerning Christ being the new high priest. If it is not written in the Torah, then it is not a law. Christ made a few changes in a few laws that already existed. You know, for instance, like adultery. As he said, if you committed adultery. You know, for, in, in regarding divorce, he said, only way you can divorce, you know, a, a divorce if, if somebody committed fornication, which is in the law of Moses. It, the, 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 the laws of fornication is in the Torah. You can't say something that's fornication because you don't agree with it. If it's not in the Torah, if it's not in Leviticus chapter 18, it's not fornication. Because, you know, you can't make something just because you disagree with fornication.
Nehemiah 10 and 28, because, let me speak to them that again, because the things that you disagree with that called the fornication were things that were probably being done way before you were born, way before Moses came upon the earth. I mean, the people within Egypt, they were probably doing it. But most High God didn't see it as fornication, so you can't say it's fornication because you disagree with it. Hmm. No. You know, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees' doctrine. A lot of you guys are Pharisees, and y'all don't even know it. Nehemiah 10, 28. And the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the nithonims, and all they that had separated themselves from the people of the lands unto the law of God. Their wives, their sons, and their daughters, everyone having knowledge and having understanding. Now, all these people here understood the law and understood, they had understanding of the law. The next phase is to separate ourselves from the heathens in the land. This is how the Most High had us established in the beginning. Leviticus 20 and 25. Ye shall therefore put differences between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean fowls and clean, and ye shall not make your souls abominable, abominable by beast or by fowl, or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. Now, this is a separation that the Most High God gave to only his people in food. This is one reason why if when you come into this truth and come to understand the knowledge of the Most High God, you got to separate yourself from these people because the fact is they're going to have you eating all kinds of food. You ain't going to know it because you know what? You go to an Asian restaurant and say, you know, I want to uh, uh, a fried dish, you know, no shrimp, no nothing. But most of that stuff, they're going to put oyster sauce in it. You can't eat oysters. You can't eat any kind of shellfish. They don't have no regard for your law. This is why we got to separate ourselves from them even when we're eating out. We, you just can't go everywhere and eat out because you know what? You know, when you go to uh, some of these Mexican restaurants and you get refried beans, they're going to be trying to put lard in it. And, you know, a lot of places they outlaw lard because lard is, you know, they don't use it anymore. But, you know, I guarantee some people are still using lard. Even among your own folks. Separation that the Most High requires is not just mentally, but also physically. The problem with being around the other nations is that they do not respect the gods of Abraham, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is not talking to them. Neither does these commandments apply to them. As descendants of Jacob, we have dietary laws that separate us from the other nations. The Most High never gave them additional dietary laws after the flood. Let's get Genesis nine and one. They nine and three. They're still under this law. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herbs have I given you all things. Now, after the flood, M Moses, now Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and their wives were told by the Most High God that they can eat everything, including the herbs. So that, that, that was fruit, vegetables, you know, all kinds of herbs, plus Anything that moves, snakes, pigs, everything. Leviticus 20 and 26. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you, or separated you, or severed you, 
from other people that ye should be mine. Most like God separated us from other people. He didn't want us. He didn't want us around other people because he knows that they they wouldn't they were uh, were not going to like or abide by our laws, and they were going to try to keep us from uh, from abide by abiding by them too, which they did. The laws and commandments is the covenant or agreement that Most High made with the nation of Israel, and He separated us from the other nations. The Most High did not place us into groups among our enemies and have us worship Him when our enemies hate Him. He didn't do that. Nehemiah ten and twenty nine, they claimed to their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse and into an oath to walk in God's laws, which was given by Moses, the, the servant of God, and to observe and do all the commandments of the Lord, our Lord, and his judgments and his statutes. This is what Nehemiah was referring. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his, and his statutes, that I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Nehemiah is referring to the covenant that the Israelites made with the Most High God. When the Israelites do not want to hear or observe and do all the commandments, that curses will overcome them and overtake them. We're going to be in curses. He, he already knew. See, he, see, the thing about it is, I'm talking about resetting and the things that Nehemiah already knew about the law. And, and the efforts and steps that he took in order to get his people in right standing with the Most High God. This is what I'm trying to relate to, to you Hebrews. You know, it, like I'm saying, the fact is, people, when people say they love you, you know, they need to understand what to do in order to show love to you. You know, giving you laws and stuff, that's cool. But when Christ said, uh, the Pharisees and scribes sit in Moses' seat, obey them because they give you the law, but don't do their works. They ain't doing the works that the Most High God is pleased with. What Chai is doing? You're my 10 and 30. And that we would not give our daughters unto the people of the land, nor take their daughters for our sons. Here's another commandment. Nehemiah going step by step in the things that the Most High God requires of us. Deuteronomy 7 and 3. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy sons. Nehemiah is bringing up the law of Moses, those laws that we confess to breaking and repenting, returning to the covenant. I would like to remind you that these laws were not confusing. 1 John 5 and 3, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. The laws are not severe, grave, or serious, which would be if the laws were confusing, yeah, it'll be grave and serious if they were confusing because you would be caught up in confusion and be misstepping if you didn't know what the heck the law meant. But the Most High God had his laws, wrote his laws down clear to Moses. Moses understood everything that the Most High God told him and he get, and he wrote them down. Not in similitude and dark sentences. Phase four, implementing and enforcing the law. Nehemiah 10, 31. And if the people of the land bring where are uh, any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath day, or on the holy day, 
and that we would leave the seven, the seven year and the exaction of every debt. So they following the law to the, t to the teeth. So, because now we're in Jerusalem, I'm built Jerusalem up. Let me see if I already got that. Even when we separate ourselves, the other nations find a way to make merchandise out of us. They do not care about our covenant that we have with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers. They do not care. You do not care. If you don't tell them, look, don't come around here on the, on the Sabbath day. Oh, they all off in the land. Because we in Jerusalem, the gate is open. The, you know, Africans coming in every, every, you know, every day. They got fish and all kinds of stuff. Shirts and kente cloth sheets and all kinds of stuff to, to sell. And you know what? Just like us, being Gentiles, we are, we out there in the market. Oh, we ain't got no food. To, we ain't got no fish. Go out there and get some fish. Oh, I want I want that cloth. That go down there and buy that cloth for me, cause I want I want to make me a dress. I, I want to make your your father uh, an outfit. Nehemiah thirteen and fifteen. In those days saw I in Judah some trading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaves and lading asses as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day, in the day wherein they sold victuals. Even when we separated, we would have people in Israel who are always circumventing the law, statutes, and commandments. We have Jews among us who will violate the Most High God's covenant. What are we supposed to be doing? Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. We're supposed to be about our father's business. However, many of us are going against our Elohim, teaming up with the enemy, who the most high, who the most high would eventually sin against us. It, it never fails. We out there worshiping Astaroth. That, that's that's why we can't get Astaroth uh, Easter. Ishtar. Astaroth is the present day Easter. We we you know Solomon was worshiping those uh, King Solomon worship worshiping those Canaanite gods and stuff. Astaroth and Milcom and stuff, which is Molech, a form of Molech. But we were worshiping all that stuff. We can't get that out of the land today. We cannot get those guys out of the land today. Those are the same guys. Those guys have just morphed themselves to, to, to the, something else, but they're the same guys. Because Astaroth and East, Easter are the same gods that we still worship. 2 Samuel 7 and 14. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I would chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. The Most High is our Father who art in heaven and we are his children. When we sin against him, the Most High beat the children with the same enemies that we align ourselves. You know, we want to hang out with the Babylonians. Okay. Worship their gods. Next thing you know, they're breaking our back in. Nehemiah 13 and 16. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and all manner of ware, and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Now, we ain't keeping the commandments. You know, here Nehemiah is trying to establish Jerusalem. We're not keeping the commandments. So, the Africans don't care. You know, we're we going to sell to them on, on 8-7. They, 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 we know they were supposed to be uh, buying on this day, but, hell, they ain't keeping it, so we're going to sell. We're going to sell. What nations are in Hebrew communi com communities selling Israelites food and wares on the Sabbath day? Because the Israelites have not 
made supplication, repented, separated, and enforced the laws of the Most High. We are breaking the Most High God's laws, statutes, and commandments. All these nations, if you go in the neighborhoods right now, in these hoods, the government government uh, set up hoods all over the country. If you go into the hoods right now, all these nations are selling us stuff on a Sabbath day. Every day. We ain't selling nothing to ourselves unless it's defiled and unclean. You know. Nehemiah 13 and 17. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? Nehemiah was zealous of the Most High God's laws. He feared the Most High, saw his works, and knew what would happen if we broke the commandments. So he went to the, went to the nobles because they were allowing this. Allowing these nations to come in to the community and sell to us on the holy day. He, he knew this. You know, this, this is the type of leadership that we need today. Go to the, the leaders. What the hell y'all doing? We, 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 we don't buy stuff on the Sabbath day. Why, why are these folks in our neighborhood? Be, be the ones running them out. I'm like Y'all can't. Y'all got to get out of here. Nehemiah 13, 18. Did not your fathers dust? And did not our God bring all this evil upon us? And upon this city? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. You know, this is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Nehemiah feared the Most High. By saying this, that showed that he had a fear of the Most High, understanding what happened in the past to know that it could happen again if you if you piss the Most High God off again. This is what Nehemiah concerned. All that evil came upon us when we broke the Most High God's commandments. The Jews were scattered in captivity in Jerusalem. Their homeland was destroyed, enforcing the Sabbath day. Nehemiah 13, 19. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants said I at the gates that there should be that should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. Nehemiah began to close the gates on the Sabbath day. He enforced it by sitting his servants at the gates, making certain that the Jews would not violate the Sabbath day. Now he went through extremes to make certain that the Jews kept the Sabbath law, but they didn't. Let me show you. Nehemiah 13 20. So the merchants and sellers of all kinds of ware lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. Yeah, they were selling stuff over the fence. Throwing stuff over the fence. Drop it down. Oh, I want a fish. Which one? Uh, that one right there. All right. Five shekels. All right, drop it down. And we'll throw it up. They throw the fish up. So they was lodged. They was sitting over by the gate. They 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 stayed by the gate. So the you know you, me and they wanted you know me and the women that wanted some just came up, up 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 there right down below the gate and hollered what they wanted. They didn't go inside of the gate, but they they right there at the gate. Nehemiah thirteen twenty one. Then I testified against them and said unto them, Why lodge ye about the wall? Why are you lodging at the wall? If ye do so again, I will lay hands on you. Yeah, you do it again. I'm gonna put my foot up your butt. Nehemiah was nice. Yeah, why y'all lodging? Why y'all over here at this gate? If y'all do this again, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna put my foot up your butt. I'm gonna lay hands on you. I will lay hands on you. From that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath. Nehemiah was a bad boy. If, you, if he said 
I'm gonna put my hands on you and everybody uh, she was like, man, let's get the hell up out of here. Oh no, we're not messing with that dude. We ain't gonna mess with Nehemiah. Cause he will put his hands. <laughs> Nehemiah further enforced the law. The Hamites were outside the gates and were attempting to sell to the Jews. Nehemiah threatened to lay hands on the merchants who were attempting to have the Jews violate the Sabbath day. This is the type of leadership that the nation of Israel requires today. We need somebody zealous like that. Separating those Jews who married outside the nation. Nehemiah 13.23 In those days also saw I, Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. Okay, Ashdod of uh, Hamites. Ammon and Moab is... is Japanese, Chinese. Now, people say they are not the Japanese, they are not the Chinese, but who are they? Those are the nations of contention today. You know, we're not going to be, uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into some kind of mysteries. The Bible identifies them in the beginning because they slept with their father. So these, these uh, Ammon and Moab have characteristics of Down syndrome, the slanted eyes, that's, that's, that's why they have those slanted eyes, because they slept with their father, a, a dominant genetic defect that the Most High God put up on those people, so, now, I'm not going to go into debates about people when they talk about, you know, Ammon and Moab are not the Chinese and Japanese, I, I, I care not to hear it, because the fact is, you know what, you know, you you look at their you look at their cartoons, look at the anime and all that stuff. They are, they show that they are. They have a they you know all the animes and stuff. They they love their they, they have this father daughter uh, complex. The the daughters love their brother complex and all this stuff. It, it just it just openly on their, on on most of their cartoons. The sisters look, you know, have a, a, a have a brother complex. Love their brother. Nehemiah saw Jews who were married to the other nations. What did he do? You think that he just let it go? Hmm. Yeah, what did Nehemiah do? Oh, it's cool. Nehemiah 13.24 And their children spake half in the speech of Asdod, and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. So, they couldn't speak Hebrew, but they speak, speak in the Asdod or the Moab or the uh, Ammonite language, and they couldn't speak in, in, in uh, they couldn't speak Hebrew. The amount thirteen twenty five, and I contended with them and cursed them, and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair, and made them swear by God, saying, "Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters." Unto your sons for yourselves. Nehemiah argued with them, cursed them out, slept some of them, pulled out their hair, pulled out their beards. This proves that Nehemiah had a zeal for the law of the Most High without fear. No, he, he didn't care. You know, you going to bring your you and you going to bring your kids in here, and you can't your kids can't speak our language. Nehemiah 13.26 Did not Solomon king of Israel sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless even him did outlandish women cause to sin. King Solomon was marrying women of other nations which was the cause of the split in Israel. Because he did not listen to the Most High, siding with the enemy. 
let's let's look at King Solomon's interracial marriages because the fact is, I, I like to nail it. I like to nail this shut because the fact is, you know what? You could say uh, Deuteronomy seven and three, and you have some people say, "Oh, that was dead when they was in the land with the Canaanites and all this other stuff." No. Here, here we are on the other end of King Solomon where Nehemiah is talking about the things that King Solomon did that pissed the Most High God off. Let's get into that so that we can understand what part of the law that King Solomon violated. First Kings 11 and 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, a Hamite, women of the Moabites, Japanese, no, the Chinese, Ammonites, Japanese, Edomites, Esau, white people, Zidonians, Mohammites, and Hittites, Mohammites. Christ never changed the law regarding who the Israelites could marry. He never said it was allowed to marry outside of our nation. The Most High gave King Solomon wisdom and wealth. This is the weakness of men, of men. When most of us get power, we no longer feel that we need our God, our Elohim. First King 11 and 2. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go to go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto them in love, unto these in love. This is quoting Deuteronomy 7 and 3, 7 and 4, for they will turn turn away from following me. It is quoting the law. The Most High God don't want you marrying outside of your nation. You know, outside of your race. You Hebrews, especially you hip-hop artists, claim you do not love these women. However, you would betray your God just like Solomon for all of these women. You would kill your brothers over these women. This is violating the two most important laws to love your God with all of your mind, body, and soul and to love your neighbor, brother, and sisters as you love yourself. But you'll kill over these women. Don't let it be a Becky. Oh, it would be some murderous tone going on over these women. 1 King 11 and 4. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. You know, David may have did some, did, did, did a few foul things, but the fact is when it came to the Most High, oh, his heart was perfect with the Most High. This is the primary reason the Most High does not want us marrying outside the nation of Israel. This also should include Hebrews acting as Gentiles and not under the law. You, you, you don't even marry you don't even marry uh, Israelites that have a Gentile heart that that refuses to recognize that they're Hebrew. I would not marry them either. I would, you know, like I say when you if if you are an Israelite, and you know that you're an Israelite, and you and you want to continue to worship the Most High God as an Israelite. Don't don't pick up and marry a a, a Hebrew that's acting as a Gentile, want to celebrate Christmas, New Year's, and all that stuff. No, you leave that with the, with the Gentiles. They are Gentiles. <laughs> First King 11 and 5. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Ashtoreth is Easter. Zidonians are Canaanites. Ashtoreth is present day Easter, which came from the Canaanites, and Milcom also after the descendants of Ammon. First King 11 and 6. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully 
after the Lord, as did David his father. Solomon was the wisest man ever created upon this earth. He knew the laws of the Most High, and Solomon went against them. 1 Kings 11 to 7. Then did Solomon build on an high place for Shemash, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is between Jerusalem and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. So Molech and uh, Milcom is the same God. The God that brought Solomon forth was watching Solomon cheat on him with other gods because Solomon stopped listening to the Most High, stopped walking in his ways. He was making the Most High jealous. Deuteronomy 4 and 23. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you and made you a graven and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. This is exactly what Solomon was doing, building altars and places of worship for his wives, for their gods. This is some of the most disrespectful stuff that you can do to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who gave us the land and prosperity at that time. Unlike King David, Solomon was not loyal to the Most High. You got land, you got power, you got wealth, everything, and here you are, knowing that knowing the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob brought you forth, and here you are making idols and stuff and justifying it for your wife, for your wives. Deuteronomy 4.24, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. The most high God will destroy you. Make him jealous, and he will destroy you. Solomon had to know this, that he was enraging the most high, doing as he pleased, and not pleasing the most high. First Kings 11 and 8, and likewise, did he for all his strange wives which burnt incense and sacrifices to their gods. Solomon willfully violated his God for these women that the Lord forbid him to marry. Now he just piled in sin on top of sin. Now Solomon, like I said, Solomon was the wisest man on earth. He knew that, violated, that violation of marrying outside of Israel, it was a violation. Now that was one sin, then he going into idolatry, another sin. For these women. First King 11 and 9. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. Because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel. Which had appeared unto him twice. Our God is jealous. Of course he was angry with Solomon. Because Solomon knew the law. And decided to do evil. The Most High appeared to him twice. But Solomon did not listen. His actions proved destructive for the nation. 1 Kings 11 and 11. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely bring the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. I'm going to give this kingdom to somebody lesser than you. That's what the Most High God does. He can take you out of the dirt and elevate you up high. He, do, he does it all the time. There was no such thing as the southern kingdom of Judah and the northern kingdom of Israel until the Most High took the kingdom out of the hands of Solomon and his descendants, except Judah and Benjamin and the Levites which ser uh, served all the tribes and the Levites which served all the tribes. So before King Solomon transgressed the Most High God's laws. There was no such thing as Judah, the southern kingdom, and, and uh, Israel, the northern kingdom. They were all one kingdom. But after that, after uh, Jeroboam and Rehoboam, they split. Nehemiah 13, 27. 
Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil to transgress against our God and marrying strange wives? Nehemiah was in, saw interracial marriage as a heavy violation against the Most High. For you Hebrews that do not believe interracial marriage or against the laws of the Most High, your spirit is not one of the sermon, distinguishing the difference between what you want to do and the Most High God's will. You got to discern what and, and, and cut that out. What you want to do is not in this Bible. The will of the Father is in the Bible. He tells you what to do and what not to do if you are his children. If you're not his children, this has nothing to do with you. You can marry who you want, except near the light. You know, you can, you know, if you're a white man, you can marry Chinese, Asian, you, you could you could do all that. On, on, on the people that most high God is concerned about are his. Psalms 40 and 8, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Every Israelite was placed upon the this earth to serve the Most High God, not do as he feels, especially when it violates the laws of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, it ain't nothing wrong with doing as you feel if it's not violating the law of the Most High. You know, the Most High God gives you that. Do as you feel as long as it ain't violating me or, or violating your brothers and sisters. Do as you feel. You know, you want to go out there on a boat and go fishing, you know, Monday through Monday through uh through Friday or Sunday through Friday and then you come out on the Sabbath day and worship the most high God and on his feast days and do all that, that's your prerogative. You know, do as you feel, but as long as you don't violate the most high God's laws, statutes and commandments. Nehemiah 13, 28, and one of the sons of Jehoiada and the son of Elisha, Elisha here, Elisha, Elisha here, the high priest was son-in-law to Sanballat, the Hornabot, Horn, the Horonite. Therefore, I chased him from me. Why did Nehemiah chase Jehoiada, a Levite descendant away? Leviticus 21 and 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people. Here are a few things that the Most High God told Moses concerning the Levite priests. Leviticus 21 and 13. And he shall take a wife in her virginity. The Levite priest's wife got to be, had to be virgins. Leviticus 21 14, a widow or a divert, divorced woman or profane or an harlot, these shall he not take, but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. This virgin must be from among his own people. Jehoiada took a wife not of his people, but from another nation who was against the Jews. Nehemiah 2 and 10, when Sambalot, that's, that's the guy that, uh, the, 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 his father-in-law, Jehoiada's father-in-law, when Sambalot, the Hor Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was a, come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. He didn't care about us. He was upset that somebody came to check on us. Why would a servant of the Most High marry the daughter of a man who hates his God? Leviticus 21 and 15. Neither shall ye profane his seed among his people, for I the Lord do sanctify him. A servant of the Most High in Christ should not be a whoremonger among his people. That's how you defile your seed among your people. You just out there just screwing everybody. Jumping in from bed to bed. Nehemiah 13 29. Remember them, O oh my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. Nehemiah even knew this. 
you know, you call yourself a priest and you up there married to somebody in another nation. Man, get your butt up out of here. He ran that man up out of town. Don't come back. Nehemiah, these are the things that Nehemiah did to successfully bring the, the Jews back to Jerusalem. Nehemiah 13 and 30. Thus cleansed I them from all strangers and appointed the wards of the priests and the Levites, everyone in his business. Nehemiah separated the Jews in Jerusalem from the nations according to the laws of the Most High. You serve the Most High God with clarity. Uh, understanding of the law. You will get wisdom, understanding when what the conditions of your people, what laws they are violating, and what must be done to correct them. You know, it's not all about just standing out in the corner giving people laws and stuff and telling people what they violated. This is what I'm trying to get at. It, it's, it's, it's more deeper than that. We got to reset and reset like just like Nehemiah did. You know, he came from the king's house to look upon his people and to and to help build Jerusalem back. And once got to got the uh, the temple built, got the Jerusalem built back and brought the people back into the city. These are the things and the steps that he took. You know, and the thing about it is, even in this process, the Jews was such a stiff neck, hard headed people. That they were still allowing allowing the uh, the Hamites to come in and sell stuff to them on the Sabbath day and all kinds of stuff. Nehemiah had to put a stop to that. How can you be a watchman when the enemy has already overtaken the city? I asked this question last week, but I, I want to give a little bit more clarity to what I was asking last week. How can you be a watchman when the enemy has already overtaken the city? Because you're talking about being on the tower, looking out for the enemy, but the enemy is already in the city and, and has overtaken you. Doesn't even make, a, make sense for you to talk about you're a watchman. This is a fair question to ask. How can you be a watchman on the lookout for danger when the enemy has already overtaken you and have overrun the city? The enemy is supposed to be outside the walls of the city. Psalms 127 and 1. A song of degrees for Solomon. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. That Build it, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake it, but in vain. So, if the Most High God is not putting it, putting his hands on it, the Most High God builds the house or the city when you hear his voice, observe, and do all his commandments. If you are building, doing your own thing, and not after the will of the Most High, then your actions are in vain. You are the watchman. You waking it up. You are waking up in vain. You, you know, you getting up early and, and waking up in vain because the fact is, you're doing your own thing. Except the Most High God builds the house, you're building in vain. Ezekiel three seventeen. Y'all like to use this one here. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. How can you be a watchman looking out for danger when you have not made supplications, repented, physically separated, your, enforced the laws after separation, removed interracial families? Your watchman duties re realistically begin after all of this occurred. How can you be a watchman when your enemies are among us? The watchmen are in the watchtower to keep the enemies out. So, your watchman duties begin when you separate your people. That's Nehemiah did. Separate your people, then you can get on the watchtower and see the dangers as Nehemiah did. He saw the Hamites coming, 
and setting setting up shop and selling food and stuff and wares and all kind of victuals and stuff at the gates. And then he was able to enforce rule upon them and say, if you bring your ass back over here again, I'm going to put my foot up your ass. And they didn't show up no more. How can you be a watchman? Because you have to be able to watch and observe and see what, what dangers are coming. That's a danger. Oh, wait, wait a minute. They're doing this on a Saturday. That's not right. And you go over there then and, and you engage with, with, with that activity and say, hey, y'all y'all can't do this. We're we going to do two things. Y'all going to either leave or we're going we gonna to kick you out. Ezekiel 3 and 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. When I say unto the wicked, it, it, it's not it's not the uh, the prophet talking, it's the Most High God speaking. When the Most High God say unto the wicked, you're going to die? That's the judgment for, for, for your sin? And thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked ways? To save his life, the same wicked man shall die in this end. In his iniquity, but his blood shall I require at thine hand. When the Most High say to the wicked, those who violate his laws and the wages of sin is death. You have separated your people from the enemies, repented, and you are teaching the laws of the Most High. This is defined in the judgments and breaking the laws. You are a servant of the Most High God, and you must. Go to your people and tell them, "Thus said the Most High God." So when you tell, when you when you say to an evil person, "You should surely die," you telling him the law and giving him the judgment for breaking that law. And if they continue to break the law, you already told them that is what you you are supposed to do. You're breaking the law. You know, you give, you teach, instruct them according to the law. And if they don't, if they decide they don't want to listen to you. I don't told them. That's all I'm supposed to do. I, I, I don't, I don't supposed to go and hold their hand and handcuff them. No, I, I gave them the law, told them what the Most High God said, and they decide they didn't want to do it. You know, I have no animosity in my heart against them because I have, I've cleared my conscience and my soul from everything else that they that, that's going to happen to them in their life. Yet, Ezekiel 3 and 19, Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. This is basically all it's talking about. I'm a, I made you a watchman. You're on the watchtower. But you have, you know, but it's, it's a condition. You, you have, you're a watchman after you've separated your people. After you've done all of these things, you made supplication, repented, you and separated. Now you enforce it. You, you're separating your people from the from from the, the nations, and then you separate, and then you make other separation. Your people from from each other from interracial marriages, and then you're enforcing the law. That's the watchman part right there. You on the watchtower, watching and seeing what people are doing. In, the, in, in your city, in your community, and you give them warning. This is what Nehemiah did. When he reminded them of what Solomon, what, what Solomon did, married all these strange women. Did not, did not Solomon, which was the love of the Most High God, did not he marry all of these strange women? This is what a watchman does. When you have told the Israelites the law and they continue in their sin, they shall die. You have delivered your soul. Yes, you must inform your people about the ways of the Most High. However, you must first hear his voice, observe what the Most High God instructs, and do all he tells you to do. You know, this is, you know, these, never mind. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways and to love him, 
and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When you fear the Most High, you get a good understanding of his voice. As Nehemiah, you will know what to do. He followed the instructions of King Solomon, the instructions in the law of Moses. He walked in all the ways of the Most High. He did more than keeping the commandments. Nehemiah understood the ways of the Most High and did them. After our captivity, Nehemiah reset the southern kingdom by making supplication, repenting, separating ourselves from the Gentiles, enforcing the laws, statutes and commandments, and separating ourselves from those who were married to heathens. It is time for us, Hebrews, to reset, just as Nehemiah did. Nehemiah is a great example in this Bible to show us how to reset the, the steps that he did in regards to what the Most High, you know, what to, what to do in regards to what the Most High God commands and wants us to do, because everything is written there. And, and like I'm saying, if if you are a student of this Bible, you can look at it and say, "Oh, okay, there's King Solomon there. That's that's you know what King Solomon did. This is the laws of Moses." And Nehemiah was quoting all of that stuff, precept upon precept. He separated. Because when we came and we were in captivity, you know, we separated ourselves from those people. Got our own space. You can't be a watchman in somebody else's territory, in your enemy's territory, and they among you. How in the hell you can be a watchman when the enemy's all around you? Don't make no sense. You can't be a watchman around your among your enemies. Don't, doesn't doesn't make any sense. You got a lot of steps to make up. You don't miss a lot of steps. You you are trying to be a watchman, and that's the wrong space to be a watchman in. Among your enemies is the wrong space to be a watchman in. You got to first separate from your enemies to become a watchman. That way, you got your people behind you, and you got your enemies in front of you. And when your people start acting up, trying to do some stuff, violating the law, give them warning at my mouth. Give, give them warning from me. You can give them warning. Hey, that's not going to be working. Hey, did not Solomon do this, this stuff? You can bring some precept and show them how they got us in trouble. But you can't be a watchman among your people. Most like God never told us among your enemies. Most like God never told us to stay among our enemies and, and do all this crazy stuff that y'all trying to do. I'm going to keep this theme until tell somebody just say, you know what? Maybe we need to re rethink ourselves of what we're doing. I, I'm not saying, you know, because the fact is, y'all all need your, 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 just, as Christ said, you know, the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Y'all are Pharisees now. Y'all teaching the law, but most I got, Christ told them, don't do their work because they, their works are not what you need to be doing. Because I don't see none of y'all doing as Nehemiah did. He was the one that brought Israel back together in, in Jerusalem, brought, uh, brought the southern kingdom back in Jerusalem. And here are the steps that he did. I'm, I went over the steps that he did. Now you talking about somebody that had a zeal for the Most High God? According to knowledge. He had a zeal. And he, 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 he walked without fear. Did everything without fear. You know, he made supplication and most high God heard him and blessed him because the fact is the king was in his favor. You know, he got, got king, he got permission to, to give wood and stuff out of the out of the king's forest, delivered to Jerusalem so that they could build build uh the gates back up and all kinds of stuff. So yeah. We ain't there yet. Most like God will start walking with us when we 
start walking back with him. We're not walking with him. You know, we got leaders now doing all, you know everything that's not mentioned in the Bible. I don't see none of that stuff that they're doing mentioned in the Bible. They're doing their own thing, jumping the gun. Anyway, hope you all got some out of this. Um, again, I'd like to thank my Facebook followers and my YouTube subscribers. Uh, you can reach me on YouTube at live, L-I-V-E, Shabbat, S-H-A-B-B-A-T, class, C-L-A-S-S, -S, all one word. Or you can go to my Facebook page. It will be the at sign, live, L-I-V-E, Shabbat, S-H-A-B-B-A-T, class, C-L-A-S-S, -S, all one word. Or you can go to www.thesonsofjacob, T-H-E-S-O-N-S, of O-F, Jacob, J-A-C-O-P, dot com. And you can visit my, visit and you get uh, you can uh, watch these uh, Sabbath lessons for free. All my class, my class, my Sabbath classes are, are free, but also I do have uh, books for sale on my uh, on, on my site. So that is in support of my, of my site. Feel free to watch the lesson, to watch the uh, Sabbath classes all day, every day, if you want. Uh, but I do have books to sell and to the, for the support of my site or sites. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys got some out of this. Now, before you, any of you that are not of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas, Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands, a product of the sub-Saharan and the transatlantic slave trade. If you're not of those people, you don't have no reason to get out of, you know, be upset about anything I say. This is not for you. The Bible basically is not for you. It mentions things about you and your people, but it is not for you. You know, so, this is not about Allah. Allah is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's the God of Ishmael. You know, why Jesus is the God of Esau, Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Not about not about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Doesn't apply. And I'm not talking about those two two God sets. They are, they are different gods that go in different directions, not for us. You know, it's all your right to believe, worship those, but you know, it's not my right. Your right to worship who, whatever you want to worship. But for the for the, for the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it's not their God. Those two are not their gods. So sorry. And for, for the, these people in Egyptology, you know, they can continue to say that the Bible was plagiarized, but they can't tell me anything in, 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 in Egyptian folklore that they can say is about the children of Israel that tells you their destination and all the things that happened before it happened. This Bible can. You know, I, I was sitting here uh, listening to uh, one of uh, Dr. Umar Johnson's thing. He was talking to a... a, a a Hebrew brother, brother, a Hebrew elder, you know, saying that the the Bible was plagiarized, and the brother was just trying, the elder was just trying to get him to, you know, tell him a few things about, about uh, what God was, where they, where they, uh, what all the black folks worshiping back then, you know, he he, he was he told uh, the brother that that the Jews built the pyramid, and, and like I'm saying. There was no such thing as Jew back then. The Jew, yeah, it was a tribe called Judah, but Jew, that Jew term did not come until after the split of the southern kingdom. That was like in the 800 BCE range. He's talking about 
you know, 1500 BCE and before. I'm like, this, this dude is like, you know, lost it. And the only thing I'm saying about it is the fact is that he 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 just should, could have he just was too proud, uh, too arrogant to admit that the Bible is not his wheelhouse. He just told the guy, he just say, look, man, this is not my wheelhouse. I, you know, be honest with you, I don't know too much about the Bible. I know some basic stuff, but you know, for my what my understanding is, and you know, you can tell, teach me a little bit more. You know, I'm be willing to learn some, but. If you're not willing to learn something, you really disrespect a, 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 a heritage that's yours, and you and you rejecting it, and then you trying to uh, trying to make light, make fun of it. I, 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 you know, I had no more respect for for that man after that. You know, I, you know, at 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 one time I could listen to some of the stuff he was saying and, and agree with it, but after after you respect my God, disrespect my God, I man, I'm telling you, I turn him off. It it, it just like Hurt me in the spirit. I turned them off. Like, you know what? I can't listen to this dude no more. You know, you got a line across with me, and I'm like, you know what? And it ain't personal about me, but when you talk, start disrespecting my God, I ain't got nothing else to say to you. Nothing to say. But anyway, hope you guys got some out of this. With that family and friends. I wish you shalom. Shalom.